All right, so Silas is going to be playing Burn, while Adam is going to be our Miracles player. Uh, two very, very common strategies in Legacy, Miracles being one of the best decks in the format, uh, arguably the best deck, but it comes in and out. Whereas uh, Silas, again, being on Burn, uh, a contender uh, in any mini game, I would say. Less so sometimes than others, but always a contender. And that's the beautiful thing about Legacy. Uh, we just have so many different archetypes. Uh, they're all good on any given day. So um, we'll see how it goes. But uh, Miracle certainly has the advantage up here. It looks like Adam, however, uh, is he already on a mulligan? Oh, no, no, that's, um, that's seven cards. I'm sorry. So yeah, um, Miracle is certainly advantaged here. Uh, the, the combination of Counterbalance and Sensei's Divining Top uh, proving to be a, a very difficult, if not extremely, like, hard lock versus burn. Uh, but I guess we will have to see how these two players de de uh, decide to approach the matchup. There are some trump cards in burn, for example, such as Sulfuric Vortex, um, even um, even Eidolon of the Great Rebel. But I Adam being on the play here with a turn one uh, sense of dividing top is pretty huge. Goblin Guide getting in here, though, for... For Silas, it's going to reveal a volcanic island, which is uh, pretty lucky for Adam, actually. And then Silas is going to go ahead and uh, jot down uh, how much damage we're taking here. Um, go ahead and update the life totals for you. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. Make sure that everything is correct. My, my apologies about the... Uh, the number pad, or I'm sorry, the uh, switch there. That was uh, a little unfortunate. Let's see what we've got going on here. So Adam uh, leads with just a spin and then a, a planes as his follow up. Doesn't even bother to play that Volcanic Island. I guess scared of Price of Progress, another extremely powerful card in this matchup. Um, can be, I should say, just because uh, Miracles does have a, 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 lot of, um, a lot of access to Ooh, so a lot of access to basics, but, this, but Adam deciding to source the plusher, the Goblin Guide, uh, before damage. Um, probably because since he knows, if he knows the top three cards, he knows there's not a land, so there's no reason to kind of reveal uh, any information. But kind of opening the door for this uh, idol on the Great Rebels, which is a, you know an excellent card in this matchup as well. But um, Silas is going to pass the turn. Adam uh, on his upkeep is going to go ahead and uh, um, is going to go ahead and top. I don't. So he he does put a terminus on top, but I don't know if that's what he wants to. Oh well, I guess it is. He gets going to one for one for this idol on a great ball, which is actually pretty reasonable. Uh, I think it's about you know it's not like a really it's not really going to stop Silas too too much, but yeah. Monster Swift Spear, the the play for Silas. I think that was his draw step actually, or that was his draw. It's going to go ahead and get in. All right, so Adam had a pretty comfortable life total here on turn three. Um, may be able to start turning the corner, but another Eidolon. Ooh, that's going to prove kind of difficult unless uh, Adam pulls the trigger on this Force of Will, which he may not just because his hand isn't really doing much else. But we're going to get a spin on the top at the very least. Yeah, so I, as I thought, we're going to get a spin on the top. And then uh, does not look like we have... Uh, anything that he would really want to see. I mean, I guess an entreat for one would not be the worst. All right, so drawing off the top, he's going to draw the Snapcaster Mage and I guess pitch it to Force of Will because he doesn't want to pitch two Force of Wills, I would imagine. Yeah, so we're going to... All right, so we are going to take one for that. Uh, still, again, still healthy. Still good life total, but... Not quite where we want to be. Because um, he needs to find some action very shortly. And, uh, you know, right now he has just two Sensei's Divining Tops and a um, and a Volcanic Island in hand. Oh, and I'm sorry, and, an, and another uh, Force of Will. So, Whereas Silas, our burn player, uh, has at least a Chain Lightning that we can see in his hand. Um, very, very likely more. Ooh, found the Counterbalance. Uh, that's going to be excellent for Adam. He needs to find some more hits, but that is going to be very good for him. This Monastery Swift Spear looking kind of suspect at the moment. Silas contemplating his, uh, his plays here. That does look like a price of progress. It's worth four at the moment. Um, I don't know if we're going to cash it in, but it's... I think... 
I think one of the possible plays that uh, Silas could have here, uh, you know, and it's it's not unreasonable, is he could definitely lead with the chain lightning. And if Adam doesn't have a one and just one doesn't want to take three, he could put the sensitive dividing top on the top of his library, counter it, and then Silas would get away with a price of progress. But it doesn't look like that's what we're going to do. Instead, we are going to just lead with price of progress. And this is going to get a trigger um, off of the monastery mentor just to start. So we're going to trigger the top. We're going to look at the top. Top couple. Is that a counter spell? Oh my goodness. That is a very fortunate um, top of the deck for Mr. Adam. But now that we know that we have a two, uh, Silas is going to have to play around that a little bit more judiciously. But at least, at the very least, this um, Monastery Swiss Spear is going to get in for another two here. Or for, for two, I should say. Not another two. Looks like Adam's probably going to want to keep that top card floating uh, if he wants to play around Price of Progress. But again, uh, we'll just have to see. I think more than anything else, he's going to want to draw a land here. Oh, he's just going to draw that. Okay. I suppose drawing the counter spell is fine. Uh, Silas quickly making note of that, which is a good, good practice. All right can kind of hear a little bit of a uh, echo from the crowd right now. It looks like there's a fire blast that just happened uh, in the background. So there are multiple burn players in the room. Uh, with statistics, which uh, we will have for you guys, um, not immediately, but we'll have that uh, b before round two, absolutely. Uh, we will cut to a break prior to uh, round two to get you some of the uh, logistics of the tournament, um, such as how many rounds, which is six, as I said, um, how many players, who's on what, et cetera, et cetera. We do have one Grand Prix champion uh, in the mix today. Uh, Video Videonto Wajaya joins us um, from, you know, deeper south in Southern California, coming up to uh, play some Legacy today. All right. But it doesn't look like it doesn't look like Silas has too much, and at the very least, he's playing around the counter spell that is currently in Adam's hand. And uh, meanwhile, Adam is shuffling a lot of gas at the top of his library, but he doesn't have enough mana to really leverage it. Although I guess a miracle entreat the angels is not the worst here, um, but he w does open himself up to that. Um, he certainly opens himself up to that uh, price of progress, which we don't want to. We, we we don't want to really see that. Um, that would be kind of a mistake on his part. He does have the counter spell up, so he can kind of play a little bit longer, just take a few more beats from this uh, monastery mentor. So we're gonna leave with shade lightning. Okay, so Silas thinking that this is the this is the spot he the spot he wants to pick. Adam gonna top first, I imagine. He's debating. Uh, it, for me, at least, he's probably debating whether he wants to put the. Ooh, okay, he takes it. Well, I, but the debate, the internal debate, must have been: Do I put the sensei dividing top? All right. Well, Adam's actually. Wow, Adam just took five here. He went. He took three from the chain lightning and then two from this monastery so spear. Uh, and like this. Um, ooh, an end step entreat the angels. Silas is going to respond. I, I mean, at the very least, it's going to be a price for four put Adam to four. Ooh, and then he can't uh, cast a one. I, I believe that's still a chain lightning in his hand. It might be a lightning bolt, though. So there is going to be a, a price at the end step for four, looks like. And Adam, well, we know it's at the top of his library. He's not going to be able to do much about that. Um... Our players just getting their angels together. All right, so Adam is at four now, uh, but Silas is facing down a horde of angels. His life total is also pressured. He's only got two turns of this. Or I guess if we leave one angel behind, it's not two turns, but yes. So we're going to draw the, the top here. Um, oh, so on his draw step, Silas has lightning bolt. Lightning Bolt to go to one. Turns off Fetch Lands, turns off Force of Will. All right. Adam taking, taking the risky one. All right, cool. But now he has to choose. So definitely he has Silas. Wow, he does not attack with any angels. Very Playing very defensively. Doesn't play his top? Wait, no, he didn't pass the turn. I am a little ahead of myself. My apologies, folks. But yeah, look, he's, he's going to play the top. And then, yeah, going to beat down with two angels.
Goes and puts Silas to 16. Passes the turn. I think that's a flame rift in Silas's hand. Um, and then he drew a chain lightning. I can't tell what that card is. It looks like it's a flame rift, though. Silas, in a little bit of a pickle, um, he's going to have to figure out how to navigate from here because his clock is very real. He's dead in two more turns. Next turn, the turn after, if, he, if uh, Adam decides to attack with just two angels. There is uh, a possibility that he may want to, say, uh, chain lightning the angel uh, post-combat uh, if it blocks the monastery mentor just to get it off, or monastery superior to get it off the table, but I just think that's negative value. I don't think there's a whole lot he can do with the counterbalance lock in play. Um, still just only a soft lock. There are a couple misses on Adam's top uh, top of the deck, but let's see how that goes. Let's see what he chooses to do. Looks like Silas is passing. Wow, very, very big turn here. Um, he finds another Force of Will, which is not actually that great right now. I don't see the need for the Terminus either. But we're going to get a Predict, which it's going to put one of these on the bottom. And I actually think, or uh, in the graveyard, right? So Predict is going to allow Adam to kind of get through some of the worst or the unneed unnecessary draws uh, at the top of his library. So one of them being, at least, is a uh, Force of Will. Not going to need the second one. He's at one. The first Force of Will is actually even, not even that good, to be honest. Um, but yeah, Adam, Adam playing very much on the edge here. Uh, you know, the Miracles player at one, though, is the most annoying Magic player in the world. That is uh, confirmed. We definitely have seen that many a time before. So, see how that goes. And, uh, you know, guys, just really quickly, just um, to put it out there, we are also doing a straw poll um, on our website. Uh, or, I'm sorry, on our Facebook page. Uh, for next weekend's Staples tournament, we're running it back. So if you guys want to check it out, we um, we would definitely love the support. Check, uh, you know, vote for what you think we should be prizing out to um, to our players next week, and we'll see how it goes. Does not look like that's going to end up resolving. For yeah, it looks like Silas is going to go ahead and scoop it up because he only has a chain light or a flame ripped in hand. Um, so yeah, it looks like Adam takes game one off of Burn, which is pretty surprising. Um, I mean, it's not a terrible, terrible matchup, but definitely in game one, there's just a, the threat levels are really high on Silas' side and not all of Adam's uh, cards line up with it, but it looked like that game, he didn't need them all to line up, he just needed a choice few. So we're going to move on to game two here, we're going to look at some sideboards. So really quickly, uh, thanks again for joining us today at Fire and Dice. We are streaming Legacy. It's gonna. This is round one of six, and we've got Silas Waltzer on Burn versus Adam Bistain on Miracles. Now, we're moving on to game two, so Adam's got some uh, some choices in his sideboard. He has definitely got a really interesting sideboard, so I'll just go ahead and read it off to you guys. We've got two Ruination, one Vendillion Click, two Surgical Extraction, two Monastery Mentor, one Council's Judgment, one Wear Terror, two Fluster Storm, two Pyroblast, two Red Elemental Blast. Now... Most of these, I would not say, would come in for burn. A lot of these are very good in other matchups, clearly. I mean, that's what the sideboard's for. But there's not a lot here I would want versus burn. I do like Vendillion Click. Uh, it just gives you a, a good blocker at, at, you know, at instant speed and also gives you a lot of information. Um, uh, Surgical Extraction's just okay. The two Fluster Storm I can see coming in. Uh, wear Tear, quite possibly. I think uh, you, he's got to be wary of... Sulfuric Vortex, it does, in a pinch, it does hit for one mana. It will hit um, Eidolon of the Great Rhetoric, because, uh, clearly. But I think... Yeah, I, I have to imagine those are the only cards that he would want. Monastery Mentor is not that bad. There are some other dead cards that he doesn't that he doesn't necessarily want in his deck. Um, like the Predict, you can shave that Predict. Uh, he's Because currently Adam's on four Predict. You can save, shave on some Predicts. Uh, Engineer Explosive is actually pretty good. He can shave like maybe an Entreat the Angels, uh, bring in Monastery Mentors as additional threat plus a, a roadblock. So those are possible um, options for him. Whereas over here on Silas' side, uh, let's see what we've got. So for the most part, I would not imagine us seeing anything besides Sulfuric Vortex. Um, but let's go ahead and read off the sideboard. So he's got three Smash of Smithereens, four Exquisite Firecraft, uh, two Sulfuric Vortex, Four Searing Blood and two Searing Blades. So Exquisite Firecraft, actually pretty excellent in this matchup. The uh, uncounterable claws on it um, being, you know, just very good against Miracles in general. And then Sephiric Vortex just being a great threat in the matchup.
Christ I told her, yeah, she has to speak to me. So we will go ahead and get started with uh, this match in just a moment. I will be right back, guys. <laughs> What is upstream? This is Adam tagging in for Chris uh, while he uh, takes care of a customer for the moment. So looks like we've got uh, Adam Stane picking up game one against Silas. Uh, I play Miracles a lot. Let me tell you, Burn is a rough matchup. Uh, it's not. It's not a. It, it's not a losing matchup by any means. But a lot of their tools are just not really what you're uh, built to beat if you don't find countertop, which of course makes the matchup. Pretty trivial after, but assembling it in the first place isn't guaranteed. So we'll see if Adam can put that together. As far as uh, Silas is concerned, his game plan is pretty straightforward. Uh, just going to check more burn spells. The advantage coming off of the sideboard, though, is uncounterability with these four copies of Exquisite Firecraft. Uh, very, very good in the matchup. All right, so we've got a shuffle. Players are going to look at their opening seven for our game two. All right, Silas looks like he's got a little land light hand, but there's a ton of one mana burn spells. Uh, he may be interested in keeping this. Yeah, just a one lander. Not sure. Yeah, he decides that it's not going to be good enough. Going to look at a six, and that's that's always rough for burn. I mean, it's an unofficial uh, combo deck in the sense that you cast seven spells and win the game. Uh, but. Every mulligan takes you one card away from that possibility. So, Silas is going to drop down to six, looking to find something more relevant. Adam on the other side, I uh, didn't get a gl glance of his hand, but uh, he found it unacceptable as well. So we're going to get the pair of mulligans down to six, and I think mulligans in this matchup are going to favor Adam. Uh, his deck is much more posi well positioned to... Mul uh, to um, manipulate his library and find the cards he needs and he's looking for a specific three or four cards. He doesn't actually need much. Meanwhile, on Silas' side, he actually has to cast a significant number of spells to even have 20 damage, whereas um, and, and then he still has to deal with anything getting countered. So each mulligan is going to put Adam in a better position. Give each other a shuffle. Very thorough, these players. All right, we're going to take a look at the six. All right, so Silas has found some very powerful burn spells uh, and two lands. So those those two lands come rolling off at the end. I think he's going to be likely to keep this. There's a goblin guide in there, but uh, the remaining burn spells are pretty pricey. Uh, all right, both are going to keep their six. Adam going to scry a Flusterstorm to the top, and here we have Goblin Guide sliding into the red zone. Good deal to show show off that Flusterstorm. So now Silas knows what Adam kept, and that's pretty sweet, honestly, when your opponent mulligans and scries to the top, that Goblin Guide gives you information about what they decided to keep. It can give a lot of, uh, give Silas a really good idea of the context of Adam's hand. Ooh, all right, starting off with a... Aaron Mesa on the other side of the board. Not exactly the land you want to see. It Anything you get off of it is either going to be very uh, minimal in what it can cast or going to leave you open to price progress. So Adam, keeping an eye out for Price Progress, just gets some planes. Curious why he got that in main phase. Um, he might have a Swords to Plowshares here, but I'm not sure. Alright, yeah, so seems that so he's gonna put the trigger on the stack. Oh no, not gonna, not gonna look at the trigger. All right, so Silas going up to twenty-two and slamming Eidolon. That is a very good play here. Yeah, Silas seems to have found a pretty sweet hand. I did see a fire blast and a rift bolt in there, uh, as well as an exquisite firecraft. So um, he's he's got a pretty uh, a really solid six. Adam re needs to find a. Oh, I see. Adam cast the swords on his main phase last turn. Adam really needs to find something to do here. All right, so he's going to plow the Eidolon. 
which is going to be a four-point life swing for Silas. But Silas's life total not going to matter a ton in this matchup. It's pretty rare that this matchup comes down to a race. It can happen every now and again, but most of the time, Miracles need, gets some amount of control over the game and pushes through before burn spells can be cast. That will seal it out. All right, so suspend Rift Bolt, pass it back. Adam going to take a draw. Seems to have found a top. So that's half of the... Uh, Half of the issue there, and that's the better half to find first. So yeah, he's going to go ahead and tap his planes. He's not going to cast too much. I'll slam his top. And Adam um, has to be pretty happy about how this game is going. He's already gotten through a few turns without taking a lot of damage. Going down to 12 here on this turn 4. But that's a pretty healthy life total against Burn. And he's already found uh, Sensei's Divining Top and has a Flusterstorm for the next Burn spell that gets cast. Um... Silas going to have to do some thinking here, what he wants to cast. Just going to pass it back. I think that's a smart move. He really wants to cast this uh, Exquisite Firecraft craft with the Spell Mastery. And so, going to wait for another spell to cast before that. I do, and, I don't, and that Fire Blast is pretty clearly not going to be the spell. I'm curious to see if... Um, no, I, I don't imagine that Silas will be trying to fire off those two spells next turn. I mean, he, he can try, but it's probably not worth the lands to deal eight and not kill your opponent. All right, so we have an entreat for, on the top with, for Adam along with a mountain and a scalding tarn. That's kind of interesting. So Adam apparently on uh, what is often called Bob Iser's Mountain. But keeping Entreat the Angels in the deck is pretty surprising to me. Uh, this is not really the matchup where you can find a safe spot to dump a bunch of mana into making angels. Though I think Adam's thought process might be that he can set up a turn where he's not quite dead and then entreat you out of nowhere for the kill. Uh, and just try to sweep the game out so his opponent doesn't have you know the, the knowledge that the game's ending soon. Alright. Gonna cast a Monastery Mentor. Leave blue up. Telling everyone pretty hard that Flusterstorm is his only piece of interaction. Um, I see... Uh, the, I think that's another top in his hand. So here comes a Lava Spike. This is likely going to resolve. Alright, gonna go put Adam to 8. And this is actually... We actually have a game here. Because Silas has 8 points of burn in his hand, but 4 of it uh, has to come from... Uh, four of it is coming from uh, Firecraft, and four of it coming from Fire Blast, which don't operate particularly well together when you can't pay for a Flusterstorm in between. So this game could very well get very interesting on the next turn. So we're going to have a top come down for Adam. Top number two is going to spell the Imminent Fireball from Monastery Mentor. going to come crashing in for three. Put Silas down to 21. And I'm going to pass it back. Um, I'm a little surprised here. I would have expected uh, at least one or two casts, more casts of top to get a few more tokens and end the game next turn. But here comes that fire, uh, exquisite firecraft. Put Adam to four. And if Silas found a second firecraft, which I believe I saw in his hand, this game could be over next turn. And I'm going to take a look. I think he has to be wondering how close to dead he is. Going to keep the Brainstorm on top. Pretty clearly the best spell will leave there. Going to take his draw. Now the interesting thing is if there, if it is not uh, Exquisite Firecraft but Fire Blast that Silas is leaning on. Oh no, there is a Firecraft there. Alright, so never mind. Uh, there's a, I believe a Goblin Guide and a, uh, Exquisite Firecraft. So Adam is likely dead next turn. I don't know how much he can do. If he can find... Okay, so he's going to brainstorm now. If he can find a Swords to Plowshares, he can actually cast it on his own creature, gain enough life to live through the Firecraft. But I don't know how much that is on his radar to even try to find. So he's going to draw the Entreat and the Mentor he knew about and a Ponder he didn't. Likely going to put those two white cards right back on top. Um, and probably fetch away those two cards. But that's a pretty worrisome position because now you're susceptible to any three-mana spell. And there are a ton of those... Yeah, I think he needed to hold on to the Brainstorm, cast it on his opponent's turn. So that this way he can rack up Storm Count and Flusterstorm, a greater variety of spells. 
As it turns out, it's not going to matter, but Adam can't know that. All right, going to move into combat. Get in for five. Put you to 16. And see, if Adam had made two more, to two or three more tokens on the last turn, he actually could have Silas dead here. But he opted to play it safe, represent a little more than they had. Yeah, Silas just quickly going to take his draw, slam the the, the Firecraft. Uh, Adam could actually spin here and try to find a source of plowshares, but he's just going to concede. Move on to game three in this matchup. Now, I don't believe Adam has anything that is going to change how he sideboards, given the information he has now that these Firecrafts are there. I mean, he had to he had to guess that they were coming in. It's pretty stable in burn lists. But we'll take a look, see if there's anything he might be interested in that he hadn't thought of before. Uh, he's looking at two Renation, one Vendillion Click, two Surgical Extraction, two Monastery Mentors, which, uh, that's actually kind of interesting. He apparently does not have any in the main board. Interesting, so he brought in the Mentors. Uh, Council Judgment, Wear Tear, Fluster Storm, Power Blast, Red Elemental Blast. So, obviously the Blasts aren't coming in. Uh, I think he only brought in the Fluster Storms and the Monastery Mentors. But I've actually found that Wear Tear is a pretty nifty card to bring in in this matchup. Oftentimes, Burn is citing in Sulfuric Vortex, which is a very important card to be able to get off the table. Like I said in the last game, there were a couple of lines where Adam could have tried to find a Swords to Plowshares to keep himself alive, but uh, Sulfuric Vortex, in addition to being a very difficult card to deal with and a consistent source of damage, also prevents that line of play. So, and in addition to that, be, having another card, uh, having a card that can be both a one and two mana spell on the top of your deck for counterbalance is incredibly important against these burn decks when, when looking at facing down a counterbalance, they will often try to alternate their spells, mana costs, in order to run you out of the ability to reorder your library, or maybe you just didn't find both a one mana and two mana spell to put on top there. Uh, so it, re it greatly increases your odds of winning once you find counterbalance and top. All right, so we're going to look at our seven here in game three. Adam on the play here. Uh, Silas's hand, I believe, has two lands and a bunch of a uh, bunch of pretty good spells in it. I'd be surprised if he sent this back. Adam looking at. Uh, similar situation, a couple of Force of Wills, which, oh, and a top, probably going to keep this. It's not a great, um, Force of Wills isn't great in this matchup, but, I mean, if it keeps you from dying, it is, it is actually great. All right, going to lead off with Island Top, pass it over, Mountain Go, and, uh, step one complete, didn't get Goblin Guided. His hand is pretty weak to that, oh, no, he does have a source of plushers. Oh, but no white sources, so, yeah, uh, pretty good to not get hit there. A little okay, so now as counterbalance, ones are officially turned off, and this is the best matchup for turn one top, turn two counterbalance. A lot of times, uh, it's actually not great because your counterbalance is effectively blind, but this matchup has so many two ones in it that turning off ones is good enough, and you just need to get things down fast. A planes is actually really great to, uh, to see if you're at him. Now you can cast the swords to plashers, and he is definitely going to do that. And this is the world that, yeah, so firing off Swords of Plowshare is going to take two from the Eidolon, go to 18, Silas coming up to 22. But this is exactly the game you want to be playing if you're at, in Adam's seat. You assemble, assemble Countertop as quickly as possible. You got the creature off the board. You're at 18 on turn three. All right, let's see what we can do. So I'm going to cast Goblin Guide. This is likely to bait out uh, putting the top on top. Uh, all right, so Adam did not find a one. Oh, he did, uh, does have an engineered explosives on the top, so he might be interested in um, leaving it there. And then, yeah, so it looks like Adam is going to let this goblin guide resolve. No, okay, so he's going to draw the Darren Mesa counter it with the top. I imagine this is what Silas wanted, yeah, because he just wants to fire off this flame rift, put you to 14, go to 18. I think if there was a time to fire off those um, Force of Wills, now might be one of them. Adam just agrees, though. 
All right, get it on tap. Draw air that top. Gonna play Arid Mesa and cast that top again, I imagine. Oh no, he has a Scalding Darn, he might cast that instead. No, gonna play the Arid Mesa. Tap an island? Yes, tap an island to cast this top. Pass it back to you. This is a little interesting. I'm curious what cards I haven't seen out of Adam's hand because now he has demonstrated that he has very limited blue mana. All right, and here comes uh, Flame, uh, uh, Sulfuric Vortex. And this is actually a great spot for Adam because he's got that Entreat on top, just ready to counter it. And so Silas is spending his turn casting what is one of the most devastating cells against you, and it's going to be no good. Yeah, just going to slide that Entreat onto the top. XX, white, 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 is CMC3. Going to do away with it. Silas not looking happy. All right, going to spin. Sees mountain and engineer explosives. I'm going to go ahead and I think he's a, just going. I think he's drawing the mountain. Yes, drawing mountain. Just going to hit his land drops. It's pretty important, especially when the entreat is not only in the deck but on top of your library. Uh, only a few lands away from being able to cast that for lethal. Pass it back. Yeah, Adam doesn't really need to do much here. Silas on the other hand needs to ch start chaining spells, and this is a great start because now if Adam doesn't find a one. He might put the top on top, which unlocks all of your other converted mana costs. I think if you're in Adam's shoes, you have to let this resolve. Alternatively, if you're super... St oh, no, you can't. Uh, you don't have a means to do it. Never mind. All right, so Adam is going to put the top on top, counter this chain lightning, and Silas is likely going to fire off the second flame rift. Yeah, put you to, put you to 10. And that's really the rough part of this matchup, is that even when you have... Well, I mean, it's not the only rough part, but it's part of the difficulty of this matchup is even when you have countertop assembled, how much is each spell baiting you into putting a top on top or into spending your mana or doing any number of things? A lot of times these spells are clearly in, uh, being cast not with the intention of resolving, but making you act. All right, Adam's counting his mana, debating how much he can afford to spend, casting his top again. And just gonna pass it back. Interestingly, though, Adam is actually pretty weak on the top of his library. All right, here comes uh, an explosive firecraft. Put you to six. But the top cards of Adam's library that we know of are engineered explosives and entreat the angels. A zero and a three, which doesn't actually counter a whole ton of spells in this deck. All right, gonna draw off the top on end step. Reveal this entreat. Gonna cast it where X is three. Interesting. So, going to put himself to five, or four off of this fetch. This is an interesting choice on Adam's part. He doesn't put, his opponent isn't dead next turn. And if he has another Firecraft, he has put himself exactly at four. Oh no, he only fetched once. Okay, so he's going for the two turn clock. Actually going to make two tokens. Put himself to five. So he's, uh, that top should be in his library, actually. Uh, yeah, so we're going to, he noticed, we're going to have this shuffled in. Okay, going to shuffle it in. So he loses his top. Now his counterbalance is blind, depending on, depending on if he has a brainstorm out of the top in his hand or on the top of his library. Um, but Adam seems to just want this game done. Let's, let's end this before he can cast too many more spells. Now we did see... But Silas has another Firecraft in his hand, and I believe a Fire Blast. So he might have the tools to get through this turn for a kill. It all really depends on what Adam is able to counter. Because while he does have... Um, oh, he has a Force Will in his hand that he can just cast. Okay, that is that's a pretty good position for Adam. Thinking a little. Plays his fetch land. Uh... It's a little rough, actually. I think playing the fetch line there's like slightly wrong in that it doesn't let you. It makes that price of progress put you to one. All right, gonna crash in for eight, put you to six, and just send it back. So Silas, mm, pretty rough spot here. So he has, I believe that's fire blast and exquisite firecraft, but that fire blast is unlikely resolved. I think he has to try. 
Um, the best... Oh, actually, no. Adam tapped mana, so he can't pay for that Force of Will. Adam might actually be dead here, depending on if Silas goes for the kill here. That's really interesting. Alright, Silas going into the tank. Not sure how he wants to proceed. I mean, honestly, for as much as people look at Burn and say it's a brain-dead list, you know, you just throw everything at your face, there's there is some definite play to be had in the deck. Uh, the difference between being a passable burn player and being an exceptional burn player is not irrelevant. There's a reason why only a few play people are like the burn player that you know. And so Silas doing the requisite thinking. He's, uh, this is this is the time when you need to put your mental energy into the game. And he clearly recognized that. We're going to start with a firecraft here. Put you to one. And Adam has to be kicking himself for casting a spell this turn because now, well, I guess as far as if, for, even from his position, he's only dead to fire blast. But his opponent has that counterbalance trigger, cast brainstorm. Did Adam leave any terminuses in his deck? That is the only thing left that can counter it. Oh, but he can swords to plowshares his token. But that increases his clock by an additional turn. Well, this game's not over, but it's still a pretty rough spot. So I think if you're Adam, you got to look at the other side of the board and say, all right, I can counter a, uh, I can keep the swords to plowshares and survive. Oh, okay, he found a fluster storm, and that's going to counter the fire blast. That is going to wrap it up here in that Silas can't cast spells, and and there's the hand. All right, Adam going to pick it up two games to one. Pretty interesting matchup. As you can tell, there's a lot more play to be had in these games than meets the eye. But we're going to go to commercial, and uh, we'll be back in just a little bit. Stay tuned, guys.